Hey everybody, I cannot believe how beautiful it is for the middle of March. You can see I've got my favorite parking spot right behind me and we're about to head to the beach. But first off, I really wanted to say thank you to everybody for all of your love and thank you for all of the positive support, all of the new subscribers. It really means the world to me to see everybody's comments. So thank you so much. Let's get to the beach and see what we find. All last week, this was covered in ice and it was really dangerous to get down here. You can still see there's little pockets of ice and it's still sticking out of the shorelines all over the place. I definitely have to keep my wits to me and make sure I don't step on something slippery like right over here. There's that old expression that I like to use with my kids. Brown means fall down and green means twice as mean. So you never want to step on these spots right over here. Look at all these beautiful pebbles. Whoa! <laughs> and I just slipped. Look at all these beautiful pebbles. It's a little glassy, but that's okay. It's my first little find of the day. We're gonna be digging through all of these pebbles today. But first off the bat, we're gonna walk the shoreline as always, and we're gonna see if there's anything just waiting on the surface for us. We're coming up to this next pile right over here. I'm not gonna kick it yet. Like I said, I'm just gonna do a little bit of surface scratching. Oh, I see something right here. Yeah, it's a marble. Check it out, everybody. It is such a tiny little marble, and you can see that it's been flattened by the ocean. I would say this one is about eight millimeters. It's absolutely beautiful. A nice little cobalt blue cat's eye. It's hard to tell how many streaks, how many veins of blue there are in it until I turn it on the side and then I can see it's a four vein cat's eye. And right next to it, look at right over here, there's a beautiful piece of green. This is probably like from an old wine bottle. You can see how thick this one is too. I would have to imagine this is like the base of a bottom because you can see how it kind of reduces in size as it goes towards the middle. This marble is just so darn cute, I'm probably gonna have to give it away at the end of my video to someone who commented on my last adventure. But at the same time, I just found this right over here and you can see it's kind of like a piece of a little industrial rivet. Maybe what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a mark right over here. I'm gonna take this big rock and I'm gonna stand it up right here and we're gonna come back later on and we're gonna pick this whole area really, really thoroughly. Look at how thick this one piece of gray is compared to all the other ones. It absolutely just dwarfs it. I have to remember not to look through the viewfinder. I have to remember to look on the beach because I'm gonna miss something like this right over here. Well, it's not a bright color, but it's a really nice aged find. You can kind of see how it's got a bit of lip to it. So this would have been the side of the bottle and this would have been the bottom right over here. So that goes in the sack. Look at this tiny that I just caught my eye from standing all the way up there. Well, I guess it's not that tiny compared to this amber brown, but you can totally see it's a piece of blue with a little bit of flashing on it right over there. You know, there's a lot of neat tinies in this little pile. Okay, everybody, we got a nice little bag of goodies right over here. It's gonna be time to set the camera down and do some digging. This is one of my favorite parts of the day because I just never know what I'm gonna find when I'm looking into these piles of pebbles. A lot of tiny sea glass right here. A little green. Oh, it's not that little, it's kind of big. A little clear. Haha, <laughs> yeah! Look at this one right over here, everybody. It's blue. It's got a little bit of lines to it. Okay, I'm gonna come in and share this. Here, check it out. Here I come everybody, this is my first nice little find of the day. So you can see it's a little piece of cobalt blue, but right on the inside right over here, it's got this little bit of an edging that's not rounded. So that tells us that this is from a tiny small little Vix or Noxzema bottle, but it's one of the paneled ones. And the paneled ones are some of the earlier ones as we've talked about before. So this one over here is probably pre-World War II because it's got that little edge to it right over here. I thought it was red for a second, but it's amber brown. I just found something with some letters on it, everybody. See that? Okay. Let's take a look at this one over here. Okay. Check out this neat find, everybody. Sorry, the sun's in my eyes right now, so I'm a little bit squinty. 
but you can see right over here, it's the letter G. And then on the bottom, it looks like it's an I or a T on the bottom. So right away, I can say that it's a 20th century bottle and it's really thin as well. It's kind of flat. One of my favorite embossed pieces that I ever found is a piece of glass. It's really, really dark and it says the word gin on it. So I attribute that to being from an old case gin bottle. This one over here, I don't think is that old because you can see it's a 20th century modern color. It's really, really thin as well. <laughs> yeah! Whoa, look at this piece right over here. Oh my goodness. Oh, it's such a nice color. Okay, this isn't from an insulator. Wow. Yeah, everybody, look at this piece right over here. This one is so beautiful. Look at this color. So, you know, it's kind of like a turquoise like you'd expect to see from an old insulator, but there's no way this is from an old insulator. You can see it's got this little edging over here. I don't find too much glass that's this color that's not from an insulator. I don't know, I'm gonna take a quick peek here and see if I can see any air bubbles. Yeah, absolutely. So there's a tiny little air bubble right over here in the top. I'm not sure if you can see it. I'm gonna try and catch it. So there's a good chance that this is early century glass. Maybe it's from uh, some sort of an, uh, a soda water bottle or a mineral water bottle. You know, you see this color a lot commonly from old seltzer water bottles. So there's a good chance that's where this one comes from. It's kind of wild because now that I look at it, it's got a little bit of a pattern right over here. I'm gonna try and catch it right over here in the sun so you can see it. It's got this little bit of a pattern and an edge to it. So you know what? This actually could be like a square bottle, maybe even like a maple syrup bottle. I remember I had an old maple syrup bottle and it was a really nice blue like this, but I sold it a long time ago. Hopefully I'll be able to find a photo of it somewhere on my old computer but this is a really neat find right over here. And now that I look at it, I don't think that these little dents over here were actually put in by the ocean. I think these little dents over here are actually from the making of the bottle and it was supposed to be this way. I need a lot of tinies for the next couple of months. So I have no problems sitting here and digging this pile and hopefully we're gonna find something awesome. It's got a little bit of pattern to it. Okay, look at this one right over here, everyone. So I'm gonna share this little piece with everybody. You know, it's not that special because it's not a bright color, but it has a little bit of distinguishing patterns to it. You can kind of see these little ridges over here. So that tells me that this piece right over here would have been from an old poison bottle. It's kind of neat seeing that bird flying right over there, right behind me as I'm filming, he distracted me. But you can see, and I'll probably match this piece when we get home to a little brown poison bottle because I have quite a few of them. They were quite common, the plain ones with this little ridging over here. Oh, <laughs> I thought it was a marble, really, really small piece of rock. It's really, really beautiful. A lot of glass here, a lot to be picked. Oh, nice little piece. And it's all like aged to perfection. You can clearly see that right over here. It's got this absolute perfect aging to it. Absolutely beautiful little pieces. Just spectacular little finds right now. And then when I get a little bit into the bigger rocks over here, I'm probably gonna find a few larger things. The glass is gonna get larger in size as I move up. Although not yet, because I'm just finding tiny little pieces. Ha <laughs> yeah! Whoa! It's a marble, everybody! It's a marble! It's... It's got some damage to it, though. Here, I'm gonna bring this one in and share it with y'all. Okay, check it out, everybody. It's a little yellow marble. Well, I'm left-handed, but I gotta hold it with my right over here so everybody can see it. So you can see it's a little marble, and it's a little bit broken. It's such a cute little find, you know, it sits flat and it's sitting on my finger right over here. Now that I look at it, I'd have to say it's about 11 or 10 millimeters. So it's aged down a little bit. It's got a lot of frostiness to it. <laughs> it just pops right out of my hand. So you can see it's got a lot of frostiness to it right over here. And it's such a bright, sunny find on a, such a bright, sunny spring day. 
So I'm really happy that this one is coming home to our collection. And then there's more little pieces of green all around me. So I'm gonna get right back out there and we're gonna do some more digging and we're gonna see what we find. Although maybe I'm gonna change the camera. Ha <laughs> ha, look at that. And then right over here, right where I put the camera down, there's a super nice, beautiful piece of dark green. It's almost like a forest green and it was just sitting right here. So I'm just gonna keep going because there's glass all around the camera and sometimes I don't pick it. Look at that, another one right over here. Okay, let's do this right over here. I'm gonna stay. Another piece of amber brown. Okay, well, I don't wanna be digging it right into my face here, but I guess this is up close and personal with Mikey. I'm right in your face, everybody, and I'm looking for the sea glass. I'm finding beautiful little shells as well. I guess they're the fragments of shells, and I'm having a great day. I cannot believe how beautiful it is, and I'm so happy to be here. Bag's getting pretty heavy. I'd say there's about half a pound, a little bit more in here. Some pretty good stuff. These little tinies, they all add up after time, everybody. One piece at a time, these little tinies are really adding up in my bag. Oh, look at this right over here. Oh, it's amber. I wasn't sure. I thought it was like a dark black or like a green, but it's actually just amber brown. And it almost looks like it's shaped like a heart. Look at that. Would it really be one of my videos if I didn't find a spark plug on the beach? Why can't I find a big piece of cobalt blue and a tiny spark plug? Wouldn't that be a nice little change for once? But look at this, guys. It's the same pile, and there's a massive piece of gray, and it's just sitting right over here. Look at this one. It's even bigger than the last one. Here, let's get them out and compare the two of them right now and see which one is bigger. Well, you can see that the original one is a lot bigger. The second one that I found seems to be a little bit more of a bluish gray and it definitely looks like it's a little bit more aged. It's a little bit more rounded. You know, I was thinking to myself, I'm gonna probably find some gray today because it's been a couple of videos since I recovered one, and it's one of the more common big chunks that I find on my beach, just because so many of them came from those large televisions, those old floor model TVs. Sorry about that, everybody. I was trying to throw that piece of rubber to my backpack so that I could throw it away later on today, and I accidentally knocked over the tablet, so I'm gonna get right back out there. <laughs> Check it out! <laughs> Look at this! Look at the size of this medallion right over here, everybody. This is just insane. Look at the size of this medallion I just found. This thing probably has been in the ocean for a hundred years. And then I turn it over and wah, wah, wah. You can see it had a chip over here and a chip over here. This probably was from a really, really large bottle maybe like a gallon, kind of a, an alcohol spirits kind of a jug. It's wild, the piece was just sitting right underneath all those rocks and I was just given all those kicks. I found that piece of rubber and it really stunk. So I guess this is my good karma right over here because I took this piece of rubber and I decided I was gonna throw it away and bring it home and do the right thing. You can see it's got some corroded metal in it. And then I found this beautiful piece right over here and it's almost like the same size of it. That's like instant karma getting me right on the beach. I'm gonna get right back out there because it's low tide right now and this is the best time to be out. Haha, <laughs> there's something. Yeah. Check it out, guys. I guess I'm too far. I guess I'm too far to be talking to everybody all the way down there. It's time to reposition. But look at this neat little find that I just made right over here. It's a piece of cobalt blue bonfire, but you can see it's got some crazy inclusions to it. It's got a little bit of black. It's got, <laughs> it's got to go back into the beach. It looks like it's gonna fall out of my hand. But you can see it's got this little bit of black on it. And if I hold it in the right light, on this side right over here, you can actually see the red. So there's a piece of iron 
that got included into this. So a lot of times when a bottle is in a burn pit or a bonfire, it can pick up elements from anything that's around it that's being burned. And bonfire is one of the most unique pieces of sea glass I think that's out there. And a lot of times it gets overlooked because it's really not that pretty and not that refined. But for me, I love bonfire because it's the strong indication that people were burning their rubbish in that specific area for a long period of time. And there's a good chance that you're gonna be finding a lot more than sea glass. You can probably dig old bottles out of the ground and neat little old artifacts as well. So I'm really happy with this little piece of bonfire, even though it looks kind of ugly. So last week I couldn't come down because all of these piles over here were frozen like this spot right over here. You can kind of see that the high tide mark has come up, but a lot of this is frozen and you just can't get at it. And then I look right over here and there's a cobalt blue just sitting here waiting for me to find. Look at the size of this. Okay, now that we've got this in the sun, you can actually see there's a little bit of a line, like a little groove or a rivet over here. And this is a little bit darker than a lot of the cobalt blue that I find. This one here is almost like an indigo. It's a really, really dark hue of blue towards purple. Yeah, when I hold it up to the sunlight, you can really see that hue. It's definitely not a regular cobalt blue color and shade that I'm used to finding. I've actually noticed some of the poison bottles were a darker indigo blue as opposed to a cobalt blue. So now that I look at it, maybe this is the inside of the bottle and these are the two outside walls and it maybe it was like rectangular. It was a little bit thinner. And then here's the bottom right over here. It's too bad it's got that little stress mark over here because this is a really great find. And now that it's dehydrating because it's in the sunlight, it's getting really frosty as well. Okay, everybody, we're back to this pile right over here. You can see this is where I put the rock as a reminder, but you can see that the trail leads all the way out into the ocean. So I'm gonna probably start at the bottom and work my way up to the top right over here. Well, let's get picking. like the perfect little heart-shaped rock. Ha-ha! <laughs> yeah! It's a piece of an old washboard, everybody! Check it out! Right over here, you can see I've got this piece of the antique washboard and it's got those little grooves on it. You can see the lines that are going in the opposite direction. And that is absolutely indicative of an old glass washboard. So we know without a doubt that somebody would have been cleaning their clothes on this beautiful piece a long time ago. It's a really neat piece of cultural history and it always gets me excited to find them. You know, if you find one piece of a glass washboard out your way, there's a good chance you're gonna find a whole bunch of them because the glass that it took to make one of these weighed many pounds. So if one of them got thrown away, it would produce pounds and pounds of sea glass. Now think about a town with 10,000 people and all of a sudden everybody is throwing away their washboards as they're getting a new washing machine that actually washes the clothes on their own. There's gonna be thousands of these shards that are thrown into the ocean into old burn pits waiting to be discovered and they turn into beautiful sea glass. A lot of these surface rocks are kind of large, so it's hard to move them around. But once I get that first little bit off of the surface, there's a lot of sea glass underneath it. You can see there's a really large piece of clear, and it's the bottom of a bottle. It's another nugget, so I think I'm in a nugget pile here, everybody. right here, nice Kelly Green. This looks like a handle from an old teacup. Oh yeah! Woo! -hoo -hoo! Look at this piece, is it yellow? Oh, I don't even know what color you would call this. Okay hey, everybody, I need your help. What color is this shade of sea glass? right over here. I don't know. I don't know if this is more of a green find or if this is a yellow find. It's kind of in between the two of them. It's almost like a citron. 
Almost if like lemon and lime had a baby, this would be the color of glass that it would be. This is a perfect 10 piece of sea glass. I'd have to say it's about an inch and a quarter and well over half an inch thick. You know, no doubt a piece like this is from the 1800s or earlier. Oh my goodness. You can really see there's a lot of creases on it and a lot of C marks. This is a really old piece of glass. Hey everybody, it's gonna be time to change bags. It's getting a little bit heavy. I figured there was a few common pieces I'd share with you before I do. You can see this one right over here, it's got the threading. So this would have been from like a really large bottle, like kind of like a, I've actually seen old Coca-Cola syrup used to come in these one gallon clear jars, kind of like a maraschino cherry or a very large pickle jar. So that's what that could be from. And then I found this beautiful bottom right over here. Look how well aged it is. It's absolutely perfect. It's probably an old bottle bottom. You know, it's early century, I'd have to say, because it's thicker than a lot of the stuff that you see after World War II. And then as I'm talking, I can even see there's a little bit of a clear and it's aged to perfection right over here. You know, this piece would be a good size if it wasn't next to this really large piece of a green bottle bottom. It's a little piece of purple, everybody. Here, I'm gonna share it with you. I know it's not that big, so I'm not getting too excited, but it's a little piece of purple. It looks a little bit different than a lot of the purples that I find. And one thing that I can mention about this is it actually looks like it's a piece of an old baking dish. Like, I don't even wanna say an old baking dish, but maybe something from the 1970s, because I've seen a cornflower blue and a purple like this, kind of like a casserole dish that was made out of glass. And the one way that you can tell is when it kind of breaks and it looks like it's breaking like tempered glass. And now I just lost it. It just fell into a hole over here. Hopefully I can find it again. However, there's a chance that this piece right over here, see, I strongly believe that the piece that I just dropped is not manganese glass. And it's one of these pieces that's from an old casserole dish from like the, the post 1950s. And now I really have to work here to find it because it seems that it disappeared right here in this hole and I really don't know where it is. Come on, where are you? Where did it go? Where is it? I think I lost it, everybody. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. It just goes to show you how hard sea glass is to find. I dropped it right here and somehow it plinkoed its way down into the bottom of the rocks. And I don't think it turned itself into this tiny, tiny little piece of amber brown right over here. So I don't know if I'm gonna spend all day looking for it because it really wasn't the largest piece. And to me, it was, a, it was kind of like a modern piece. But it is such a mystery how that piece just completely just disappeared on me. Oh, I found it, I found it. Okay, there you go. It's not gone, everybody. I'm gonna put it in the bag right now and I'm gonna get back to picking. Nice little tile wear right here got a little bit of a, kind of like a beige slip to it. It's a nice find. Okay. Haha, <sighs> <laughs> yeah, there's a piece of pink right here. Guys, there was a piece of pink right underneath that rock that I just moved. Check it out. It's a neat little pink bean right over here. It's absolutely perfect. Okay, it's not absolutely perfect, but maybe it's about an eight or a nine out of 10. It's really hard to catch the color right over here when I'm holding it. So I'm gonna go like this and you can see, man, the sun's in my eyes. It's been so long since I had this feeling and it's a really good feeling at that. So you can see, I got this beautiful piece of depression era pink. This is like karma for me for losing that purple piece. It just seems that the sea glass gods are always looking out for me because I found this piece after spending all that time looking for that tiny little purple. I'm rewarded by finding this really nice piece of pink right over here. You know, I think that I'm gonna have to pay this karma forward. So I'm gonna take this little piece of pink and that purple and a few other pieces of sea glass and we're gonna do a second giveaway to somebody who commented on my last video. It's just one of the most beautiful things you'll see out here in the winter time is all of this ice and it just drips down. The water kind of melts out of the shorelines and makes its way to the ocean, but it freezes along the way. As the tide rolls up, 
Usually it picks things up for us to find. Sometimes it's exciting. Sometimes it's just boring amber brown like this. But we're gonna use it all. We're gonna clean the beaches. And we're gonna have a great time doing it. So here's a little bit of a pile. I just love the contrast. You can see like a nice pink purple shell and you can see like a dark blue one right over here. Just absolutely beautiful contrasting colors. Nature is completely random. Just like the sea glass is completely random as well. We don't know what we're gonna find. Every single little push here, every little kick. Oh, I see something right over here. Here we go, oh, here we go. Here we go, look at this, it's a beautiful piece of, I don't know, it's a beautiful piece I'd say, of kind of like a nice aqua blue. And then right over here, oh my gosh, look at this one. Yeah, look at this color, it's another piece of beautiful turquoise. A piece like this has to be really old because you can see it's absolutely riddled with all these tiny little bubbles. The more that I dry it out, the more amazing the surface actually is. I'd have to hypothesize that a piece with bubbles like this might be from like an 1850s mason jar or maybe like an 1840s through 1880s mineral water or soda water bottle. It's extremely old. I mean, a color like this, it could even be from an old insulator. This is like Swiss cheese on the beach. I've got to find and I want to share this with everybody over here. Now it's a clear piece of glass and at first you might look at it and think it's some sort of a cap or like a crown, maybe even a stopper, but this is a piece of an old glass fuse. Now I know this because I find a lot of glass fuses out my way. You can actually see now that I'm looking at it, it's got some tiny little air bubbles in it right at the top over here. So it's probably like a 1920s fuse. And uh, the truth is my house is 120 years old and it still uses fuses like this. It doesn't use breaker fuses. And a lot of houses out this way are still using these old glass fuses. I think that the earliest ones that I found with patent dates on them are from about 1928, 1929. And I've even found a few that say Pyrex on them with patent dates from the 1920s as well. So right over here, I'm thinking I'm gonna be able to match this to an original piece at home because I find quite a few of them over here. And a few ways that you can tell about them, occasionally they kind of have like, like a hexagonal shape on the inside as opposed to being round. They can actually have these little flat edges over here. It's another nice piece of gray, everybody. And then here, I've got like a piece of a plate that's got a little bit of pudding on it. Oh, and then I get wet. And then I look down and there's a piece of aqua right over here. <laughs> look at this. Okay, guys. Look at this find right over here, everybody. This piece right over here is very rounded. It's almost rounded like that piece of the fuse that we just found, but it has a little bit of a bottom right over here and the curvature is extremely tight. See, normally you'd find a piece like this and you might actually think to yourself, it's just the neck of a bottle but because I've dug so many bottles in my life, I've seen this before, and I know that such a tight little circle like this is from like an 1890s to 1910, like a little pill bottle, like a medicine bottle, if you will. I'm almost certain that I have some old pill bottles from the 1890s to 1910 that are at home in my collection that I've excavated because these bottles were a lot smaller, so they usually survived a lot more than the larger ones. Okay, the waves are definitely starting to come up over here. So I'm almost certain we're gonna be able to go home and we're gonna be able to match this piece right over here. This would have been the bottom. You can see it's got the little seat to a bottle that it originated from about 130 years ago. Okay guys, the tide is starting to roll in. 
it's making it more difficult to pick these little piles. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick this last stretch right over here. It's a nice little aqua sea foam. It's like a, a little clear piece and it looks like a heart. Oh, another little seafoam piece. The pieces are just coming out from everywhere here. Oh yeah, look at this one. Woohoo! It's another piece of like a turquoise teal. Maybe it's more like a seafoam blue than an actual teal or a turquoise but it still is a really nice little color. And I probably just found like six or eight little pieces of aqua sea foam in this little pile right here. Over the weekend, my eight-year-old son, who's just an artifact hound, he found this rusty old cigarette lighter walking in the harbor. Now there's no maker marks on it, you can see. It only says fill here on the bottom. You can see right up here, it says fill here. It's a really neat little piece you can kind of see. I don't know if it's like a, originally was a brass, which would tell us that maybe it's from like the 1930s, but it's an amazing little artifact. And it's wild because my son, when he was four years old, he found a musket ball. And it really wasn't that he knew that the musket ball was what it was. It was the fact that he found something and he knew that it was different and he brought it to me to identify. I'd have to say he's found about 30 bottles in his young career. And he was just so amazing because I walked right past this and his brother walked right past him, who's seven years old. And then he just said, dad, I see something metal in the water. And I didn't see it, I didn't see it. And he totally had to point it out to me. It's a really neat little find. I wanted to share this with you. Now I know it's a 20th century find, but occasionally I find something and it just makes me think that the people that were visiting Oak Island were visiting here at the same time period. Cause I'm gonna share with you this other steel artifact that I found yesterday while walking in the harbor. Look at this really old piece of metal, everybody. I'm pretty sure this is an old shovel. Yeah, look at this. I don't know about you guys, but I don't remember the last time I saw a shovel with a handle like this over here. You can see all the striations in the metal, and that definitely tells me that this is an older piece of metal. And uh, after the rainfall, I guess it just washed out. It's kind of wild. Every time I walk through the harbor after a bunch of rain, I can find the oddest little artifacts. And this one over here, you can see it's got some caked on sediment right at the top. It's such a unique little shape to it though. I've never seen a handle that looked like this before. I'm gonna have to do some research here. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. So I'm just sitting here and I looked up. Now I'm gonna show you something. I'm not even sure what it is, but it's very bright and yellow. I'm gonna grab it right now. Now look at this. This, I am not sure. I think it's a piece of plastic. It looks like it's some sort of an animal. See, if I take a bunch of glass that's the same size of this and I put it in a bowl and I give it a swirl, the plastic is gonna float and flutter. That's the easiest way to tell without doing any damage to it. So I'm pretty sure that this is not glass. Now that I touch it, oh yeah, absolutely. It says China on it right over here. So I guess it's a little animal from some sort of a toy set. Really neat and it's gonna come home with me because I take everything. This is a little bit different looking, so I'm gonna share it with you. Look at that, it almost says the word peer, P-E-I-R. Now I've encountered a lot of ceramics in my life that come from insulators, from telecommunication poles and electricity. So the chances are to me that this is a company that made insulators for telecommunications and electrical purposes. And I just happened to find a little piece that has the company name on it over here. I'm sure if I had the time and I did the research, I would be able to match this to an original. It looks a little bit older now that I look at it, you know, it really looks like it's older. It's got some porousness to it. It doesn't look like it was vitrified properly, which means it was fired at a high enough temperature. So there's a chance it's a little bit older. And there's also a chance that I'm way off with this and this isn't for a, a telecommunications and this isn't an insulator. But just seeing this little bit of a brown slip on it, most of the ceramic insulators that I encounter out this way have the same kind of like a little brown slip to it. And that's what makes me think that that's what this is from. Oh, yeah! Look at this piece! 
place right over here. Woo! <laughs> Look at this piece right over here, everybody. This one is just off the charts. Oh my gosh. Look at this piece right over here. This is one of the craziest handles I've ever seen. Look at the side. It's got a huge cavity in it right over here where it would have affixed to the vessel. Oh my gosh. You can almost see there's a few little air bubbles. There's a whole bunch of tiny little air bubbles in this piece. Now that I think about it, I've actually seen this before in those gallon jugs. And you know that bottle bottom that I found a few hours ago? There's a good chance that a handle like this actually came from a vessel, like a glass bottle, that was similar to that had that base right over here. So we're gonna put the two together right now and see what they look like. Hopefully, it's the exact same color of aqua sea foam and it's a perfect match. Okay guys, so I've got that really big piece of aqua sea foam and lo and behold, they are not a perfect match. They're not even close. This one's more of like a greenish type of a teal and this one is an aqua blue. But you can imagine that the bottle would have been really, really big and thick like a gallon and it would have had a handle like that so that you could actually get a hold of it. Another one. Uh, you've got to be kidding me. Check it out, everybody. It's another one. I just found another blue nugget right over here. This one is just as dark. It's a little bit rounded as well. You know, it almost looks like it's the exact same one or it's from a very similar bottle. And I cannot believe it because for me, usually when I'm out on my beach and I'm finding pieces of cobalt, they're very, very small or maybe even like a half an inch at most. So to find a piece like this one right over here is another rarity. To find two in one afternoon is a very special afternoon for me. I'm gonna have to try and get out again tomorrow. It's gonna be a little bit colder and it's gonna be a bit of a later tide. Once again, you can see on this bottle, it absolutely rises and kicks up. So this is probably the bottom of a bottle. It's well aged as well. Again, you can see it's really, really frosty, a nice piece of glass. Although it has suffered a little bit of damage. And over here, you can actually see the original side where it's a little bit glassy right over here. Oh, here we go. This one's special. Here, let's check this one out. You can see the sun's finally going down and now I can have a chance to see everybody and I don't have to squint anymore. So I just found this piece right over here and it's another handle. This one here is not as cool as the handle that I just found. It's a clear handle, obviously, and it's probably from like a beer stein, if you will. Something, you know, like a handled mug. A lot of people would have had these in their house. This is probably like a mid-century find. It's not that old, but it's really, really neat because it's elongated. It's kind of like a finger. If I hold it up like this, it looks like it's aqua sea foam. Now you see it? Now you know. It's the case of the disappearing sea glass, everyone. Everybody, this one's pretty interesting over here. I'm gonna share it with you. Okay. Check out this right over here, guys. This is another piece that I don't think I've ever seen anything like this before. You can see it's got this cobalt blue on it, but it's not transparent. It's almost like a solid blue. It's really hard to see through. So I'm kind of wondering right now, and you can see the pattern is really inconsistent. Here, let me hold it still here. You can see the pattern is really inconsistent and it almost makes me think that this cobalt right over here kind of was added onto the glass, like it kind of fused on in some sort of a bonfire. I don't know if it was actually made this way, but it's really, really hard to tell. You know, when I hold it up, I'm not seeing too much like ash and inclusions that I would expect to see in regular bonfire. So this piece here is kind of an enigma to me. It's very intriguing. I can see that it's a little bit glassy on this side over here. So it suffered some sort of a stress very recently. It's a piece of old clothesline, surf tumbled, and you can see it's got the metal still in it. Hey kids, pack your bags. We're going to Woodland. Yay, we're going to Disneyland. No, 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 we're going to Woodland. 
We're gonna see how they make bricks in Woodland. That sounds like the worst resort ever. Okay, everybody, it's a new day and I'm back at home. I've got a few examples of original bottles that I wanted to match to the pieces with everybody before I get to the giveaway. So for starters, I'm gonna go with this pill bottle right over here. You can see with the bottle upside down that this piece is an absolute perfect match to the circumference. If you look right over here, you can see that there's a tooling line on the lip right on the top. Also that the seam on the side of the bottle stops before it reaches the top. So what it tells us is that this bottle right over here was made before the automation process came into play. So I can safely put this bottle at being 110 to 130 years old. Another thing to look for in these bottles that predate the automation process and its perfection is the inconsistency in the pour. You can see on the base over here that there's a lot more glass as opposed to this side over here where it's really thin. Now you're not going to see that in most bottles that were made after 1930. And you're definitely not going to see a line that stops and a hand-tooled lip that's before this time as well. And the next piece I wanted to share with everybody is this one over here that I said was from an old glass fuse. You know, when I put it next to an apothecary stopper over here, it's easy to see how you could confuse one for the other, although this one here has the outside wall. I have a few original fuses that I've dug out of the landfill. The circumference of it is an absolutely perfect match over here to both of them because they have a universal size to them. So that's not going to change. The fuse doesn't matter if it's made by Halebro over here in the 1930s. And this one over here, it also says 1930, but it's a Pyrex. These ones survive probably for the same reason that those bottles survive, is because they're so much smaller, so it's harder for them to break. And here's that hexagonal shape that I was talking about on the beach as well. When I took this little amber brown shard over here and matched it to my poison bottle, it became obvious to me that this one over here, this shard, comes from a bottle that's about twice the size, probably like an eight ounce bottle, because the ridges you can see are a lot wider. It's it's still from a poison bottle, no doubt. However, because of the size of the ridges over here, it leads me to believe that this is from a much larger bottle than the one that I'm showing you right now. Okay, everybody, it's gonna be giveaway time. You can see I've got everybody's comments over here. I wanna say thanks again, everybody, for all of your kind words of encouragement. And over here, I've got the random number generator. So the first drawing is gonna be for the little blue sea marble, and a little bit of an assortment of sea glass is gonna come along with it. Here we go. 34. Let's take a look right here. Who's it going to be? It is going to be Karen McDonald. Hi, Karen. Thank you so much. I guess it's a good thing I had a horseshoe because I'm sending the blue marble to you. Okay, everybody, let's do the second draw right now. Three, two, one. 32. <laughs> Catherine Wiseman, thank you so much for loving my knowledge. Okay, I'm going to be leaving a comment on your comments very soon so you'll know how to get a hold of me. Well guys, we made a lot of really great discoveries again today. I just can't thank you all enough for your love and positive support. To all my new subscribers out there, it really means the world to me to know that I'm on the right track and that you appreciate my adventures and my education. So thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you so much for commenting. You know, I really wish that we could come down here every day and do this more often. It's too bad that these waves are just pushing up so much during these winter months. So thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you all again real soon. Gee, I love learning how bricks were made in woodland. Could we go back?